All right, guys, I'm gonna show you how to fix a, cro a common problem on a 743 Bobcat. And it might work on some other ones too. Um, it's no secret, I have a couple 743s. Um, and I've encountered this problem a couple times. I got this machine super cheap because basically it did not move, but the arms raised. Uh, when the guy told me that, I basically uh, talked to my friend uh, who's a really good Bobcat mechanic. He gave me some pointers and we checked the filter. So without further ado, I'll show you how to fix it. There is an internal filter in the pump that uh, will keep it from moving. Um, so if you have the arms raising and everything like that, but you don't have movements, you know, forward and frontwards and there's no pressure on the handles, it's probably this filter. So well, let me show you my old one. Here it is. And as you can see, there is junk. Yeah, there's crap all in this filter. So yeah. And this is the sleeve that goes around it, and then you have a spring that goes against the bung, but I'll show you all that. Tools you'll need is a one inch wrench, a one and a half inch wrench, so it's an inch and a half. Channel locks, that's basically what I grabbed it with. And you'll need a new filter. Bobcat has sent me one. Uh, they're only about 18 bucks. And so I got this machine for three grand. After I do this filter, I gotta rebuild some cylinders on it. And then I'll probably list her, I'll probably paint her. I got stickers coming too for, she'll probably sell for 7,500 to 8,500 uh, if I'm lucky. So here's the cab, it's tilted back. And now we're going to get in there, get your one inch wrench. Middle, right here, behind this nipple or fitting, there is the filter. So you're going to take this, get all the, this line loose, pull it back, and then this, fill, this uh, fitting right here is an inch and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, we got our hydraulic line off. Next, there's not a lot of room to work in here, so it's kind of tight, but your inch and a half wrench, this side works best on it. If you had a big socket, you could do it too. Okay, yeah, when I did it the first time, I had to put a pipe on it. And uh, there is a gasket on there, so you want to check it. There's a little like an O-ring, and make sure it's not broken or bunched up. But uh, once you get it turned a couple times, you can take it off by hand. And so, about finished this part of it. Yep, and there's a spring in there. You'll have to fish out with a hook tool. Um, you can carefully do it with a screwdriver too. And behind that spring is the filter, and it has a sleeve around it. And so let's go look at our new filter. So, on this one I already removed it. And you can see the old one's trashed. This sleeve goes around it, then the spring goes on that, and then that bolt goes on. Um, let's look at a new one. Part number 65639995. Clean, pristine. I've already installed the gasket they give you. So we're going to take a little bit of brake part cleaner and clean this sleeve, clean this, and go ahead and spray a little bit in the port. Clean it out carefully. Teach their own. Some people say don't use brake parts cleaner because it'll, you know, uh, eat gaskets and stuff. But uh, as soon as we turn this machine on, it's all going to be passed through the system pretty fast. So it's good just to get any loose dirt and shit out of it or junk. Yeah, before I clean this, I kind of want to show you there's uh, pieces of old O rings down inside there. Yeah, that's a piece of O ring right there. So that could have came off. Gosh, I don't know. It could be the inner seal of a lift cylinder or something, which is why I'm rebuilding lift cylinders on this machine because one of them is leaking. So we're gonna clean that out real good, get everything clean, and then uh, I'll show me putting it back together. Okay, when you're removing the whole one, um, you can grab this little end piece with your channel locks. Uh, I had no success with my um, what do you call them? Needle nose. The channel locks work better for me. Cause it's a tight area all right so i've sprayed it a little bit in there i've cleaned it out and uh i've cleaned off the, the uh, old parts that go back in there put the new filter in now 
The hard part is finagling it and sit down for this. So I like to do it all together. And you might have to go lower, like what I'm doing here. There we go. Got to get that slide in there. Should slide in there easy. Should. I need two hands. Why am I filming this? <laughs> oh, come on. Get in there. All right, it took a little finagling. So now we just finish sliding back in. It just pops in there. Then we put our spring in. Here's your spring. I clean this spring just in case. Slides in there. Now the hard part to do on camera is to tighten this bung in. And again, look at your O-ring. It's still good. There's no cracks and it's not chunking off. But, you know, if it was bad, you need to replace that. So this goes in here. We got threaded in there. Um, if I can get the threads to start with one hand, I'll be golden. Oh yeah, I'm golden. Yep, you just tighten that down and you'll know. And then you reapply the hose and then you should be good to go. But uh, parts like 17 bucks. If you buy a machine that doesn't move, yeah, it could be this. Now, it, the good way to tell is if your arms move and you, you're not getting travel, it's probably this. The other option is behind this plug here, there's what I call, it's kind of like a uh, surge protector. If there's like a sudden surge in hydraulic pressure, there's like a plunger with a spring and it moves. That gets stuck, you're screwed. It'll do the same thing. You undo that bolt, make sure it moves back and forth, clean it off with some memory cloth, put it back together and you're good to go. But uh, hope this repair helps y'all uh, figure out what your problems are. And uh, yeah, there's a million small repairs to do on a 743. I gotta repack that cylinder next because it's leaking.